Creating contacts is one way you can increase your efficiency with sending emails and with sharing your docs. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create contacts. I am in my Jeffco Gmail and this is my inbox. So I can create a contact right here if someone has sent me a message. If I just hover over their name instead of clicking on the message, I have some shortcuts here and if I select the more features, I can add this person to my contacts. Now to view your contacts or to add more without having to do so directly from an email, just use the drop down menu next to mail and toggle back and forth between mail and contacts and you can also access your tasks here. So I've selected contacts, which takes me to my list of my contacts. You can see the one I just recently added. Now if I want to add students here or other staff members or team members, I don't need to know the ID numbers. I can just simply search by last name and you'll see that my results are categorized. So these two results are already in my contacts. These are other contacts, probably people who have emailed me. And then these are my domain contacts. So these are people within the Jeffco domain that match that last name. So you can see if I type in a name like Smith, it will pull up several results and you can simply put a check mark by anyone that you would like to and you select add to my contacts and then those two choices are added here. You want to add more details about a person you just select their name and you'll be able to add in additional details. If you want to remove a contact simply select go to the more menu and delete those contacts. Now to make your contacts more efficient, particularly for sharing, you'll probably want to create groups to sort these into. So if I hover just over on the left here, I'll get some more choices and you'll see one of my options is new group. You can create a group for a class or your team. And to assign people to groups, you can simply put a check mark by their name. And so if I wanted to put Katherine Eck and Nancy Mickle in my third grade group, I just use the instead of add to my contacts icon, the groups icon, and I can add them to that third grade team and click apply. You'll see that one person can be in many groups. So Nancy Mickle can be on my entire staff group. She can also be in my LMC group and she can be on my grade three team group. Now the reason why you want to create contact groups is so that you can efficiently share things. So now if I go to compose a message, instead of typing my team members' names individually, I can just type grade three team, and it includes all the members I've assigned to that group. And these contacts can be taken with me to the other apps too. So if I am in Google Docs and I've set up an agenda for my team's meeting and I want all my team members to be able to contribute their ideas, I can use the share button. And again, instead of typing my team members in individually, I can just type in the name of my contact group and it automatically shares and saves this document with them. So setting up contacts can be a great time saver when it comes to sharing documents and sending messages among people that you regularly communicate with or share your projects with. And setting up contact groups for classes is another thing you might consider. However, Google Groups is another option for sharing with large groups and we will look at that tool next.